Okay, so Pi News episode 73, and I have a new piece of hardware on my desk, camera module 3. I've had this for a while, and uh, I've been testing it out. It's on the back of my Raspad. I was using it as a portable camera. So more on that camera in a minute, but uh, first of all, I wanted to start off with this interview that uh, Chris from Expanding Computers did with Eben Upton, the CEO of Raspberry Pi Foundation. Uh, unfortunately, we're not going to see a Raspberry Pi 5 in 2023, so we're going to go... Uh, well, this this will be the longest we've ever had a Raspberry Pi model before a new model replaced it. Uh, so the Raspberry Pi 4, which came out in June 2019, I did my first video on it, and it is still a great model. Uh, I'm using it right now, running KDE Plasma on it, and uh, it works great. It's still overwhelmingly the best supported SBC on the market, and I'm sure will remain so. So we're going to have to wait a long time for the Raspberry Pi 5 but uh, I'm sure it'll be great when it comes out and I can't wait to try things on it, but I'm gonna have to. So let's have another look at that camera. I've just been charging up my Raspad. So I've come out into my new extension, uh, which is not finished yet, but uh, this is where my desk will be on this end wall. So I'll have a nice lot of light in here uh, and a lot of space as well, because we're knocking into the house. But uh, this is the setup I was using. So there's the Raspad. Uh, unfortunately, I had to use terminal to be able to take photos uh, because Cheese didn't recognize such a new camera. You can see I've literally just sellotaped this onto the back. Uh, but this is not the wide camera because there's two cameras. This is the camera module of three. So if I click on the terminal and press up on this Bluetooth keyboard, you can see lib camera still, autofocus on capture. And this is what I did. I went out and took a load of photos and you'll see what happens. So you can angle the camera and after a few seconds, it will take a photo and then it uh, saves that as a file, which is in the root. So if we click on the folder icon, uh, you'll see, I'm guessing it will be one of these most recent ones and it will probably be this one. There you go. So that's the photo it's just taken. Put some bits down here just to show you how it auto focuses. So if I do that again and try and show these objects, the trouble was, I couldn't actually see what I was taking a photo of when I was taking a photo. You can see that it auto focuses and then it takes that photo. So press the up arrow on this keyboard and then press OK and you'll see what happens on the screen. You can see it's got the item, it will then focus and then it will take the photo. Obviously over time this will get much better because people will write proper programs. I need to have a look at the forum and see if anything has been added uh, since I had it because I had it at a very early stage. And this is the story from today actually. Uh, it's just been announced, so 9th of January. So let's click on it. New autofocus camera modules. So starting at the familiar price of $25 with both visible light and infrared sensitive options with a standard and a wide view. Autofocus makes a huge difference to the overall sharpness of the image five centimeters to infinity and they've got some videos on it on their site as well so made by sony 12 megapixels so to higher resolution and bigger pixels so it must be a bigger sensor to be able to deliver that and the bigger sensor means that it captures more natural light so you usually find they're better in low light situations oh and it says that on there and there's a couple of images here to show the difference between the standard and the wide angle camera. So obviously depending on what you're using it for. So things like security cameras, that wide angle camera is going to be really good. Be great to see uh, support in motion iOS. But I'll put a link to this story in the description. Next up uh, from CNX Software, LatPi 2, a DIY laptop for Raspberry Pi 4 and other single board computers. So let's have a look at this. So you can see it's all transparent. It's got a trackpad on the keyboard here. Pretty small display, seven inch display, some very big speakers compared to the display. Uh, what we're looking at, 1024 by 600 resolution, has a camera as well. Oh yeah, the camera's underneath the display and there's details about the batteries and everything else. If you're looking to build your own laptop, there's a video as well that I'll link. And next up from Tom's Hardware, Raspberry Pi Pico makes SD stored games playable on a PlayStation 1 console. Now what this is doing is using the original hardware. So I've got an original PlayStation 1, but I generally use emulation, and I like to use emulation like Duck Station because you can upscale the resolution and it does look a lot better. Some of the original PlayStation games looked quite ropey because it was very early stages of 3D, but if you upscale them, they do look really good. But if you want to play it 
in the original as intended. Maybe you've got a CRT monitor and you want to see it exactly as it was. Uh, this is very, very clever. So it tricks it into thinking it's the original disc but plays from a micro SD card. Great work. There you go. Pico Station. We've got a board here with the Pico on it. The micro SD. I like this sort of thing. So Hackster I.O. Uh, resurrecting a childhood radio with a Raspberry Pi. So I used to work uh, back in the 80s for an electrical store, an independent one that used to sell Roberts radios. But also there was a lot of this sort of radio knocking about. And uh, there's not that much use for them now because they're not digital and you know we, we're so used to having so much choice. And this has been resurrected with a Raspberry Pi. So we have a look inside. You can see the Pi in there with all the wires using the original speaker. It's using a Raspberry Pi 2 Model B, 3 watt stereo amp, and there's a separate video on that. So have a look at that if you're interested in doing that sort of thing yourself. This was on Reddit, uh, and it says here, look, sorry, this post has been removed by the moderators, but uh, it looks like a Raspberry Pi Pico there. And I'll just play a little tiny bit of it because I think you need to play this all coming together. Here we go. So a self-balancing robot. It was nice to see a few people getting Raspberry Pis with the extra Raspberry Pis that they made available just before Christmas. And uh, if I check RPI locator now, so I see Pi 4 Model B 4 gig are in stock here. Uh, I don't know if MX is Mexico, is it? Let's check that out. Uh, so if we click on here, 1916. Okay, so around £82. I guess that makes sense. Next up was this cool story involving Lego. Uh, and I lit up recently when the uh, lady selling us a kitchen was telling me that the something like the outside of the drawers are made of the same material as Lego. So assembly of Lego computer display block with built-in Pi RP2040 display and capacitive touch sensors. So here is one of those. Uh, I used to have it in some Lego space. Uh, where it was like a computer screen, like a computer monitor. And you can see very, very tiny and intricate. And here it is, look, with the display running. It just looks so cool. And I'm sure I saw another story with it running Doom or something. And here's a nice story on Reddit about using the GPIO pins to use paddles with a Pong game. So with paddles, it's like a wheel that you turn around. Uh, so you've got proper analogue control and for certain games it really does work nicely. And you can see there's uh, various different details about the circuitry and how it's set up and there is a GitHub here as well and a wiring diagram. Another Pico on Reddit and this is a 1.3 inch LCD clock. There we go, nice visuals there. It's impressive what people can get running on Picos. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.